two brothers, while lost in the woods, come across a mysterious cab driver and a very unusual man named Dr. Vink. This is Ryan. And this is Ashley. And this is Ruining Our Childhood Presents... Are we still afraid of the dark? I still Question? <laughs> yeah. I uh, kind of blinked for a second there. <laughs> like, what is the name of this podcast? Hi, guys. Welcome. This is the first official episode of Are We Still Afraid of the Dark? Where we rewatch the 1990s classic TV series, Are You Afraid of the Dark? That is what we are doing here on this podcast. Yes. And if this is your first time joining us, hi, my name is Ashley. And this is Ryan. And we like to talk about movies usually, but this is a special podcast that we're doing. Yeah. And we're going to try not to ruin our childhood, but might ruin our childhood. Oh, yeah. Oh, just a little bit Mm -hmm. by rewatching episodes of Are You Afraid of the Dark? Yes. Which you can purchase like we just did, on Vudu, 65 episodes for $29. Yeah, but I swear it, a week ago it was 19 and I was saying, that's a steal, and yeah. also, a podcast idea. Yeah. I still think $30 for basically an entire series is a very good price. That's true. It's just the idea that I could have gotten it cheaper. Yeah. You can't put a price on memories. That's That's so true. <laughs> That is very true. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to break down the first episode. Yes. Titled The Tale of the Phantom Cab. That is the title of the first episode. (laughs) And like I said, the summary, it's about two brothers who go into the woods for some reason and uh, they get lost. Yeah. And stuff happens. Yeah. So... Why don't we uh, go with our first category? Well, hello there. There, first. <laughs> I just had like a stroke. <laughs> I was waiting for you to finish that, and then I was gonna just add that if you listen to our regular "Ruining Our Childhood" podcast, you know that we love our "Well, Hello There" category, mm-hmm. where we talk about. Any famous or recognizable actors or actresses that were in the movie, or in this case, TV show, that we forgot. Yes. And I truthfully don't remember very much about any of these episodes, so it's going to be a... Everybody I see is going to be a surprise to me. (laughs) That's that's true. Yeah. I, I vaguely remember maybe like a BuzzFeed article or something like that about guest stars people that are now famous that were on afraid of are you afraid of the dark but it's Uh been a really long time since i read that article so i don't really remember okay that many i'm assuming it's a lot of canadian actors because there's one thing i learned from watching this episode was holy canadians i think the first words that are spoken was the possible inductee into the midnight society and the minute he opens his mouth you get slapped with some Canada. Yeah, I felt like I was watching Degrassi. Yeah. It was amazing. Yes. How did I never notice it, too, as a kid? I don't know that I was so aware that Canadians had a specific, uh, specific dialect. Yeah. Maybe we just thought that, man, those people are talking slightly different than how we speak. It wasn't until I would say I was a teenager and a lot of pro wrestlers were Canadian. Mm-hmm. And you could definitely hear it on some of them. Interesting. So that's when I picked up on it. I think I didn't pick up on it until I specifically watched shows like Degrassi, which yeah. I knew were made in Canada, which I I never realized this this TV show was made in Canada. Yeah. Who was your first well hello there? The first one would be part of the Midnight Society, and that was Jacob Tierney, <laughs> who plays Glenn over on Letterkenny. And he's also a creator of the show. Yeah. He yeah. writes a lot of the episodes of Letterkenny. So. Yeah. I I knew I was expecting him just because 
after watching Letterkenny, I was looking at IMBD and I saw that his one of his credits was Are You Afraid of the Dark? Mm-hmm. And then when I s- saw him in the episode, though, he didn't really look... He looked familiar, yeah. but he had this, like, blonde bowl cut, so I was actually pretty surprised yeah. that it was him. Because also, I mean, he was probably 14 years old right. at this point, and now uh, he's probably in his 40s, close to him. Yeah. Or late 30s. Yeah. Who, who did you notice? Uh, Rachel Blanchard, mm-hmm. who has been in a bunch of stuff. Yeah. I guess the most recent thing I remember watching her in was Flight of the Concords, but I know there was something else that she was in recently. Yeah. The big one that I just off the top of my head remember her from was playing Cher on the Clueless TV show. Yes. Which people, fans of Clueless, probably like to forget. Yeah. It That's wasn't the best show. Yeah, because Clueless is a really, really good movie. And yeah. It was a pretty my, shitty take on it. My thing about that show is, obviously they couldn't get Cher, they did end up getting, like, a percentage of the cast, and the only ones they didn't get were Cher and Paul Rudd. Yeah. And Paul Rudd is arguably one of my favorite parts about that movie. Mm -hmm. And the one guy that played him, he's from Hey Dude, I think. Okay. And he's been in a bunch of, like, teen shows in the 90s. I can place him in my head, but yeah, I don't know his name. He just wasn't Paul Rudd, you know? No, no. Mm -mm. But anyway... Did you have another person? The last person I have is the person that plays the actual character, Denny, in the story that's being told. Buzz. Oh, he plays Buzz. I apologize. Uh, His name is Jason Trimbley, who I had no clue who Jason Trimbley was, but I knew who Jacob Trimbley was. And Jason is Jacob's dad. Yeah. So if you don't know who Jacob Trimbley is, he's... A child actor who mm-hmm. was in Room yes. with Brie Larson a couple years ago. He was in The Boys? Good Boys. Good Boys. Yes. The Seth Rogen movie that just came out a couple months ago, which is freaking hilarious. Yes. I've never seen it. And, you know, he's a really good actor. And, and it's he was just... on Last Man on Earth. Yes. Yeah. He's been and on it, a bunch of stuff. It's just funny that I saw the guy's last name and I was like, that's a very specific last name. And then I looked and the trivia was Father of oh. Jacob Tremblay. Yeah. So that was all I had as well. Yes. There wasn't a lot of big names in this no. uh, mm-hmm. episode. Should we move on to our plot and plot holes? Yes. We should probably start digging. I'm going to make that a thing. <laughs> start Sorry. digging for some plot holes. Um, I thought the plot, the idea of two kids getting lost in the woods, incredibly believable. <laughs> Even though he had a compass. <laughs> but that part I believed. The first plot hole I realized is, why are these two together? Because Denny, the older brother, obviously hates his... Hates his younger brother. Yeah. This is my theory. He was going to murder his brother and leave him in the woods. Okay. His little brother. I could see that. Because he literally could not stop insulting him at every turn. And just anything the kid did was the worst thing ever. According he, to Denny. He, yeah, I was going to say, he had a ton of anger issues. And I just question, why would Buzz go in the woods with him if he treats him like that? And it wasn't having been a little sister, or I'm still a little sister. Mm-hmm. It's not that, like, playful, like, he's being a jerk, but I really look up to him. It was that his big brother was a jerk, and I'm surprised, I'm surprised Buzz wasn't there to off him and leave him in the woods. Very true. Did you have any plot holes? Other than why they were in the woods together in the first place. Yeah. That was that was the majority of it. The Towards the end, there was some questionable things. Yeah. I, I didn't so much have uh, plot holes, but if you want to sashay onto our next category, I had a lot of them. Yes. But first, let me leave you with a line. Okay. That Denny said to his brother. Don't worry, I'll smack you when you get home. <laughs> After Buzz apologizes for getting them, I think, lost in the woods. It's wow. after they meet the mysterious cab driver. Uh-huh. Uh, before they walk into the creepy cottage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I did like, it's not so much a pothole as so much as, dude, calm down. They start running because they could see a light. Yes. And they start running towards the light. And Denny yells at Buzz, hey, slow down. You're going too fast. And the 
pace that Buzz is moving at can only to be, sky- be described as a brisk jog. <laughs> and he's just like, get back here. Slow down. And I'm like, he's barely jogging. This just goes with my point that everything Buzz did, Buzz would breathe wrong. And Denny was like, God, I fucking hate you. Yeah. He didn't say the F word, but <laughs> he might as well have. Yes. It was the only word he didn't use to insult <laughs> his younger brother. Also, uh, once they... So, this mysterious driver, who they don't even know he's a cow driver at first because he's just no. walking in the woods, and he takes him to this cottage, and he's like, have fun with this crazy old man who's going to ask you riddles, mm-hmm. and leaves. And the doctor slash scientist guy, Dr. Dr. Vink, mm-hmm. is showing him around a little bit, and he's like, let me show you this brain of a wild boar, and he has it in his bare hands, and I'm just like, I'm not that much into science, but I feel like you're kind of ruining... You could contaminate something yeah. by touching it. I feel like you should have that in a jar. Yeah. You know, with your severed hand that you had. <laughs> yeah, with the severed hand. Well, that's true. I'm just saying, do you want to move on to our next category? Yes. Go ahead. I'll go ahead and tell you, bud. Woo, woo. Red flag alert. And there's a lot of them. Yes. Red flags. We all know what they are. Yes. It's, they're the things that warn you that you could possibly be in danger or that somebody's crazy or that, you know, you might be potentially being murdered soon. Yes. And there's a lot of them in this episode. Very, very true. Right off the bat, stranger danger. Yeah. Follow Flynn, who's the cab driver, mm-hmm. into the woods. Who He approaches you. And within two seconds, he was putting his arm around Buzz. Yes. I went, what up, Chomo? You need to get gone. You just said Chomo. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, it's just, he's an older guy. He wears his hat very uniquely. Yes, very Gomer Pyle. Yes. Like. And he's all like, yeah, follow me. I'll take you to some other guy. Yeah. even more weird. Yeah. Then I am. I was going to say, and when they go into Dr. Vink's slash the Seven Dwarfs house, Mm -hmm. because that's where he lived, he would not allow them to use a phone to call their parents. And they repeatedly asked to do that. Guys, get out. Yes. Leave. They shouldn't even walk into the house. Yes. The man takes you to a bearded weirdo with a mullet. You don't go inside his creepy cottage. I think they teach you that in kindergarten. Yes. You do not go in the cottage where the weird bearded mullet guy is. They teach you that in kindergarten. Also, Stop, drop, and roll. Don't go into the cottage with the weird mullet creepy beard guy. If he offers you liquids like weird tea, do not drink them. They didn't drink them. Yeah. But he did offer them. Yeah. And then he said, in the, the instance that you said, where he refuses to let them use his phone he says we play by my rules or we don't play as he's holding scissors to the phone line hedge clippers yes massive yeah guess what i guess we're not gonna play yeah i think we should leave i'm getting the hell out of here (laughs) and then i decided the that dr fink looked like a creepy hagrid because he's also in a weird cottage like hagrid yeah and he he was really hairy. Oh, he was. But he was not nice. He was not a friend to all. No. Did you have any other more red flags? Um. So after they leave Dr. Vink's cabin, which it's funny because he's giving these riddles and he's like, well, if you lose, you leave. And they're like, they're almost like a little bummed. They're like, what? Mm-hmm. We want to do the riddle or at least buzzes. And I'm like, no. Leaving would be the best option right now. You should probably just leave yeah. before you are asked the riddle. And so they le- they don't solve the riddle. And they immediately get into a strange cab. They don't know who's driving. It's in the middle of the woods. Yeah. It's, of course, Flynn, the guy that they met before that took them to the creepy doctor. Yeah. I would not get in that cab. No. No. I'm surprised these kids did not end up murdered. We don't know. Well, we do know because we saw the end of the episode. Well, they maybe got murdered the next day for poor life decisions. I mean, they did get into another car (laughs) with somebody at the end of the episode. So it's it's, uh, 
bad decisions, kids. Bad that decisions. is true. Did you have anything else? Mm. Our next category is, when was this made again? About everything that references the 90s, including oh. fashion, technology, and just data references in general. Oh, yeah. What did you have? Uh, there was quite a few as far as fashion. Mm -hmm. Right off the bat, at the very beginning, when the Midnight Society's going to meet up to tell the story and possibly induct a new member, they are wearing so much denim. Yes. It is Canadian tuxedo season for them. <laughs> really was. And it's funny, I didn't really notice the kid, I can't remember his name, the one that tells the story to get into the Midnight uh -huh. Society. He's actually wearing a denim vest and a white shirt. But start of the story, Denny, the jerk older brother, is wearing a white shirt with a button-down denim shirt yes. cut off. And I couldn't decide if it was supposed to be a vest or if he cut off the sleeves to just a button-up shirt. I think he cut them off. Yeah. Well, I mean, he probably didn't. It was a costume department. I mean, I know well, yeah, yeah. this isn't real life. But yeah. it was a weird look that yeah. only could be described as really early 90s. Very true. Oh, and he had the highest of high top shoes. Yes. They were very interesting looking. They were tops. amazing. Yeah. I would say. We kind of talked about the doctor and his sweet mullet. Yes. But his clothing, he was wearing layered, mind mm -hmm. you. He had a polo shirt with a button down shirt over the polo shirt. Then he had a blazer over that, followed with what looked like a bathrobe over the top of that. He was into layers. He was bringing in the layers in. Interesting layers. <laughs> Very true. That's all I had for fashion. Um, the only dated reference that I really had was at the beginning of the episode, Denny calls Buzz. Do you want to say it? Tonto. Yes, because he's supposed to be guiding them, which... If you hate your little brother, why why are you giving him the power to guide you somewhere? Yeah. But, okay, whatever, Denny. You do you, man. Angry, angry Denny. God. It was, yeah. It's a, Very interesting. A dated reference, if I've ever heard one. For sure. Um, That's pretty much it. I mean, did you want to discuss anything else about this episode or anything that you noticed? No, because I think the biggest thing for me was the red flags, and I, we hit those. That's true. So... And, of course, in the episode, just for closure's sake, they do end up solving the riddle. Yeah. Which was not that hard, I guess. I will say I was trying to solve it, and I couldn't. Oh. Yeah. And they even cut to the Midnight Society, and they're like, you can't have a riddle. They're just, like, making rules as they go as far as stories. They're like, yeah. you can't have a riddle like that that's not solvable. Yeah. It was silly. Do you want to move on to our awards? Award season. Yes. We give out two awards every week here on Are We Still Afraid of the Dark? And the first of which is going to be the Kel Mitchell Award for Exceptional Overacting. Yes. <laughs> Who did you give yours to? Well, I mean, I'll, there are so many to choose from for great acting, actually. <laughs> No. Great acting. A lot of the acting was horrible. The one I ended up giving it to was Buzz, mm -hmm. Jason Tremblay, just because he, I felt like he, you could tell he was reading off a script. Yeah. He was, it was very scripted. It was very, just not great. And yeah. at one point he's like, I'm good at riddles, but he's not good at acting. <laughs> so true. Just, just not good. <laughs> and then when they're in the, the cab... He was like, was that a hand? <laughs> like, you saw it yourself, Buzz. Yes, the uh, doctor had a severed hand in a jar. And you were right to run away. Now, I gotta give it to the same person. I gotta give it to Jason Tremblay. Like, on top of all of that bad acting, then they're in the car, and they're supposed to make it look like the car's moving. So, him... And uh, Denny are just sitting next to each other, kind of doing like a bob, like the cars going over just progressive little bumps. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is a dirt road in the backwoods. Yeah, but it, it looked awful. <laughs> no, it was, You could it just was... tell they were doing that. And I think they yell at one point in sync, but the yell is like, 
if I were just to go, ah, <laughs> that that was the quality of yell we got. There was definitely, and I'm I'm sure we're gonna see a lot of this in future episodes. Just straight camera screaming, mm-hmm. and it it was quality. It was definitely is quality. Very quality. I agree that he was the worst part because oh, yeah. I think at least Denny, even though he's a very angry kid. It came off angry, and that's it was the right emotion that he was trying to convey. Uh-huh. So, should we move on? Yes, we shall. The next award is a little more prestigious. It's the Keenan Thompson Award for just doing the best under the circumstances. <laughs> Who did you give yours to? I gave it to an actor named Aaron Tager, who was played by Doctor, or who played Doctor <laughs> Vink. He he was not played by Doctor Vink. <laughs> he played that character. There wasn't a lot of actors in it, mm-hmm. and you kind of have to take out the Midnight Society, although there was some questionable acting on their part, but there's such a small part of the episode. So I went with him. He was a very over the top. Yeah. But at the same time, you could tell he wasn't the worst actor in the world. Okay, Ryan. Ryan, okay. Thank you. I gave mine to Flynn, played by an actor named Brian Dooley. Mm. Mostly because of the same reasons. He was, to me, he was the least over the top character in mm-hmm. the episode. He was a little creepy, but it, I think the kids were supposed to be creeped out by some random guy in the woods. He basically told them the end of the story or the end of the reasoning why they had to get in the cab and how the cab was a bad thing, which I just felt like the whole story in general was a little. A little hokey. A little hokey. Yeah. But he um, just seemed easily the the least annoying character <laughs> that's true to me so yep. that's why i gave it to him okay what what's going on what's going on with this episode and what do you think of it <laughs> like i said i think it's believable two brothers will get lost in a in a wooded area but i don't think it's very believable that they're going to be jumping at going towards a cottage with some guy they just met and go inside said cottage I, I also didn't think it was a very scary story. No, and I think that's what we're trying to answer here, is not that Mm. it's believable because we are talking about Are You Afraid of the Dark? Yeah. But that we're... Was it scary? No. And do you think you would have been afraid of it as a kid, if you could remember it? If I was... As a kid, I think I would have definitely been afraid because he had a brain in his hands, he had a hand in a jar. Yeah. As a kid, that would have scared me. That's true. Yeah. Just his uh, Dr. Vink's demeanor would have freaked me out as a kid. Yeah. But I agree, it wasn't scary in the sense that the kid sucked. <laughs> it's We've said it in, in our episodes of Ruining Our Childhood when we're watching like a horror movie. When there's people that you don't really care about if they live or die. Because <laughs> they're so annoying. And uh, these characters kind of conveyed that. Yeah, I would have been okay if they died. Yeah. Because they were stupid. It's a child's show, though, so they're probably not going to Not going to. So I would give it the reluctant Eric thumbs up. I also will give it the reluctant Eric thumbs up. And if you don't know what we're talking about, because you didn't listen to the first episode. Yeah. Our trailer episode. We're going to give thumbs up. And if you've watched the first episode, you have definitely seen the various thumbs up that are... Uh, when they're voting for the new member. Yes. And Betty Ann's arguably the best thumbs up of all time. I would put it up there. And again, I'm going to put that on my so- our social media if I can find it. Mm-hmm. And just keep replaying it over yeah. like a GIF. Hopefully somebody has put the GIF up on there. I want people listening to this to think of what they envision to be the greatest thumbs up in the history of the world. Then multiply that by 10. And that is a Betty Ann thumbs up. That is correct. Yes. That's very correct. And then Eric's is a little more like... I guess. He's got to go with the group. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I guess. He doesn't like the guy. Maybe he feels like sexually threatened by him. Could be. You know, there's only so many girls. There's only so many guys in the group. That's true. And I wanted to touch on one thing. Sure. At the very beginning of the episode, the Midnight Society is convening in the woods by the campfire, and they are leading this potential member up to a campfire with a blindfold on. That's true. 
That is so dangerous, guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Come on. Mm-hmm. Smokey the Bear would not approve. No. That it's it's one of those things that if anybody finds a charred body in around that area, it's those damn kids at the Midnight <laughs> Society. <laughs> those damn kids. Those meddling kids. Yeah, I just sounded like a Scooby-Doo villain. Yes, you did. Um. So, what? What do you no. want? No. What are you looking at me for? Give me a thumbs up. Oh. Betty Ann style. That was amazing. Oh, yeah. So that's it for us on this first episode of Are We Still Afraid of the Dark? Throw us a review and a subscribe on whatever podcasting platform you're listening to us on. Yes, please. And we're going to get some social media, I'm sure, involved on these. We don't have... Well, I'm just going to use our old one. Oh, okay. So it's a lot of work, Ryan. Yeah. You want to do it? No. Then... So you can follow us over at Ruining Our Childhood... Yes. On Facebook and Instagram. That's correct. And Twitter, at ROC Movie Podcast. Yeah. If you go on our Instagram and hit that link on our bio, then you can also access our website, which we're going to add some stuff there eventually for all your added enjoyment of ruining our childhood. Faux show. And also, that's it. I guess we're done. Yeah, we're done. See you next week.